Hello everyone, we are back with another episode of Arcanum series and we're getting close to the end here. Um, we're now on the Isle of Thantos. If look at our map, we can see that we landed here. And we need to go to, uh, to the southernmost tip. Uh, is that where you go? Southernmost tip, right? Fine as root in. Let's look at our uh, notes here. Get a lot of notes after a while. Okay, so. Um, Archeon, remains of Rudens, or the Isle of Thantos, okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's the bottom most point, so let's just head uh, down to the very bottom. Alright, so we made it to the land bridge. Um, we just need to cross over here. Lots of monkeys here. All right, we uh, made it through this uh, pathway. It's uh, pretty long. Uh, I think we started up here. 
You come through and you kind of hug the left side of the map. And then you come down and continuously, uh... So you hug the map. Yeah, left side. There we go. Come to this uh, little spot here, and it's a house. Let's walk in. Elf wizard. What do you want of me? I did not choose to live on this island for its ambiance. I chose it so I wouldn't have to entertain fools. Leave me be. Calm down, I'm not here to bother you. I'm looking for a grave. That is quite the fool's journey, just to find someone's dead body. I'm afraid to ask, but whose grave would you be looking for? Why are you afraid to ask? I am afraid to ask, because I know the answer. There is only one reason any fool would risk his life to come here, and that is to search for the great Nazruddin. Does it sound as if you hold him in high regard? The great Nazruddin is nothing but a thorn in my side all these many years. Seem fairly bitter towards the old chap. What? How dare you, old man? Do you have any idea who you're talking about? Nazruddin was the wisest and most benevolent elf in the history of Arcanum. He saved us all, and that includes you. So I recommend you keep your comments to yourself. Oh? And you think you know about Nazruddin, young man? Who are you to tell me about that old worthless elf? Worthless? What I ought to... No, I'm not going to sink to your level, old man. Nazruddin would have had more patience with men of your kind, and so will I. I don't have to defend him. Oh, of course you don't have to defend him, young man. The old elf was completely incorrigible. There's no defense whatsoever for individuals of such low character as he. You've chosen well not to waste your words on the likes of Nazruddin. You're testing my patience, old man. Another bad word about Nazruddin, and it might just be the last one you say on both feet. Do we understand one another? Uh, Virgil, perhaps you ought to keep your voice down with our new friend here. Ah, now there's the voice of reason, and from such a beautiful young elf. You know, in my younger days, I knew a girl who looked a lot like you. She had the most wonderful name. Let me see, what was it? I suppose it would translate to something like the Silver One. Yes, I also know someone like that. She used to tell me about a great man she once knew. She told me that he taught her a great many things. That he was much like her own father. Ah, yes. Make sure to pass on my greetings to your mother. She was such a wonderful child. And it seems she has a wonderful daughter as well. Greetings, Princess Raven. I will pass on your greetings to her. It will make her very happy to know you are here among us. Greetings, Nazruddin. Nazru, what? You're Nazruddin? I would say in all my glory... But I'm afraid I haven't any left. But you're Nazruddin. You saved the world from Aranax? No. I delivered the world to Aranax. I put in place the system that he felt was his for the taking. I even imparted my elven arrogance to him. I must bear full responsibility for his actions. A bit dramatic, don't you think? Aranax's actions were his own. You do not understand. He was my son. I taught him. Everything. Only to see him be carried away by his youthful temper. I should have seen it. There must have been a way to stop him before it came to... what it did. I've heard all the legends. Can you tell me what really happened? It started in the Age of Legends. I was young, headstrong. I thought I could take on the world, and I did. I fought the good fight to protect the lesser races, as I arrogantly called them, from the chaos that raged everywhere. Dragons, demons, evil sorcerers, I fought them all and won. And this all before even the days of the Elven Council. How did the Elven Council come about? I gathered a group of idealistic mages together, and we created an Elven Council for the good of all. We really believe that. For a time, I suppose it was even true. I really believe things began to change when we discovered a way to banish things from this plane of existence. 
Why? It was the ultimate weapon. Once something was banished from this plane of existence, it could never return. With ultimate power comes ultimate responsibility and ultimate corruption. We were quick to use it on new and ever more terrible threats. The Bane of Kree, Krakatur, Gorgoth, Kurgan. It's hard an Aranax fit in all this. Sometime during all this heroic carnage, my son came of age. I quickly ushered him into the council, amidst some of the others' protest about his young age and inexperience. And then it all came crashing down upon me. Look, are you certain you really want to hear all this self-pitying drivel? Of course, so why did Aranox actually do that was so terrible? He had taken it upon himself to keep the balance, as he termed it. He believed that being a member of the Council validated any course of action he chose to pursue. This meant attacking anything he saw as a threat, such as a city that had begun building advanced technological devices. Vendegroth, it was called. He warned them to cease their destructive behavior and destroyed one of their factories to underscore his point. Justifiably afraid for their very lives, they swiftly constructed a device that could destroy even the most powerful wizard. He responded by calling on forces that few of us had ever seen and wiping not just the city but the whole province of Vendegroth from the face of Arcanum with one blow. He felt himself betrayed when the Council condemned his actions. He showed no remorse. In his arrogance, he was sure he would be vindicated. I cast the deciding vote to banish my own son. If I must die, I will be the last, he screamed as he hurled the spell that brought an end to the Council, the Age of Legends, and my will to live. It was a harsh dawn that morning on the plains of Brodgar, and it was there in the shadow of the Black Spire that our armies met in the most terrible battle that our kingdom has ever seen. As the sun set, only four of us were still alive to witness the destruction we had brought to pass. I found Aranax among the corpses of our decimated armies. And it was there that I condemned my own son to the void. that Aranax was subdued, and I watched my own son fall into the horror of the void. But such was the fury and power unleashed by this conflict that the very fabric of reality was torn asunder. With our remaining energy, we were able to seal the rift with powerful wards, and the Ring of Brodgar still stands today as a monument to my son's destructive pride and my own unforgivable failure. When I regained consciousness, I was on the shore of Thanatos. I'd regained just enough energy to seal myself in a regenerative shell. I remained that way for a thousand years. No one had ever stayed in a shell for anywhere near that amount of time. Somehow my magical hibernation extended my life much beyond that of even the most powerful elven mages. Hmm. Okay, so why have you hidden yourself for a thousand years? The world out there is not mine. It only serves to remind me of my failure. Everyone I knew, everything I held dear is gone. I myself should have died long ago. Besides, I do not fancy being worshipped as a god. <laughs> I know the feeling the Panari think I'm a reincarnation. I pity you, then. I received a taste of their hero worship from Mannix, and I can tell you I didn't like the taste of it one bit. 
An interesting point of view, all things considered. Hold on there. Do you two realize exactly what you're talking about here? Perhaps this is an interesting philosophical debate for you two, but we're talking about the foundations of the Panari religion here. Virgil, I don't think now's the time. I mean, if you're not dead, that means you're not his reincarnation. Where the bloody hell does that leave the rest of us? Are any of the prophecies true? Have all of us Panari just been running around half-cocked for the last 2,000 years? Easy, young Virgil. I know how all of this must make you feel, and I apologize for making light of your beliefs. Unfortunately, I don't have the answers you're seeking. I mean no disrespect, Nasruddin, but if you don't have any idea as to what's going on here, then you'll forgive me if I'm having a few doubts concerning the validity of my newfound religion. <laughs> Good, Virgil. If there is one thing in life that one must learn, it is to question everything. In the end, I'm sure you will have the answers that you seek. And whether or not this is all the fulfillment of a prophecy or just random chance, does it change the gravity of our situation? Would you do anything differently if you knew one way or the other? No, I wouldn't. And I will see this until the end, regardless of the reasons behind it. Thank you, Nasruddin. At the very least, your wisdom warrants a religious movement, even if its followers tend to be a bit soft in the head. I'm touched. Listen, Nasruddin. I feel as if I've been waiting to hear those words since I awoke those many years ago. I had hoped it would never come to this. Why, Aranax? Why can't you see the folly of the path you've chosen? What are you going to do about this situation? What am I going to do? He's your son. What are you going to do? I fear there is nothing I can do. I am old, tired. I do not believe I could stand up against my son now, even if I could find a heart to try. How is... How is it that he is still so powerful after all this time? We do not know what life in the void is like, if it can be even called life. Who knows what sources of power could be found on the other side? There must be some way to stop him. I can think of only one possible strategy to defeat him now. You must retrieve the Vandegroth device that was meant to destroy him. The Vandegroth device? You said the Vandegroth was destroyed. And so it was above ground. There are many catacombs and tunnels lying beneath the surface. Some of the members attempted to retrieve it to use against Aranax, but they never returned. We were forced to battle him without it, and you know the consequence of that. What does the device do? Extremely powerful mages have the ability to regenerate themselves whenever they are badly hurt, as I did. If one is powerful enough to hurt a master sorcerer gravely, the mage will retreat into his regenerative shell and emerge stronger than ever. The device is the only way known to disrupt the regenerating shield. And disrupting the field kills the mage within? Quite so. The technology of the device is designed to disrupt the field in such a way as to cause the shell to drain the life force instead of regenerating it. Quite gruesome to contemplate, actually. Further, it is said that one who is killed in this manner is forever separated from this world, with no chance of being returned magically or otherwise. How can I find this device? You must search the ruins of Endigroth in the wastes where the city once lay. Where can I find the ruins? The wastes are vast, as you know. I do not know exactly. Those days are long past, and with them a better part of my memory, I'm afraid. All I know is that at one point, Vendigroth and its settlements spread out over that whole area now known as the Wastes. There was a bridge leading into the Vendigroth province. Here. Why don't you retrieve the device? I must conserve what little remains of my energy to banish you to the void once you have retrieved the device. The banishment spell is rarely performed by a single mage. Its power requirement is so great. Hold a moment. You are going to banish me? Certainly. 
If we were to wait for Aranax to breach the wards, I fear the loss of life would be immeasurable. It seems everything has fallen to me once again. The irony of all this is not lost on myself. One might almost believe the prophecies to be true. It does appear that you are instrumental in halting this cataclysm. If only this were not necessary. I had hoped if Aranax ever returned, he would have realized the error of what he had done. Judging from my encounter with him, I'd say he had not. Yes, yes. It is obvious to me that he has committed himself to a path which can only end in his destruction. What do I do once I have retrieved the device? You must meet me at the site of the wards, the Ring of Broadguard as they are now known. The barrier between the worlds is thin enough there for me to be able to send you across by myself. I would suggest that you bring as much help as you can recruit, as it will be no easy task to defeat Aranax. I'll do it. Can you clarify some things for me before I'm off? What is it that is troubling your thoughts? You tell me about the others that were banished. Whose tale of woe would you like to have recounted? What was the story behind Gargoth? Gorgoth's is a simple tale, though disturbingly common in the Age of Legends. He was a mindless beast with an insatiable appetite. He had a liking for halflings, if I recall correctly. Bringing him low to quite a fierce battle, though a mindless one. He could think of nothing to do with him, so he banished him to the void to keep him from wreaking any more havoc. What is it that is troubling your thoughts? Whose tale of woe would you like to have recounted? Can you tell me of Kurgan? Kurgan was a member of the council. The only human one, in fact. He was a dabbler, he was. Always experimenting and searching for new magics. His discovery of the necromantic arts was the beginning of the end for him. The council took a dim view of magics that had the ability to manipulate the very life force of a being and we bade him to stop any further inquiries in that area. I'm assuming he didn't. He totally disregarded our warnings and continued his ghastly experiments. Aranax was assigned to investigate and turned up the rather disturbing details. Kurgan had been stealing corpses and experimenting with their life forces. What was infinitely more disturbing to me, though, was the vehemence of Aranax's drive to have Kurgan banished rather than simply exiled. Why did Aranox's attitude trouble you? Our mission was to impartially judge, to rule for the common good, regardless of our personal feelings. Aranax did not even attempt to hide his hatred of Kurgan. Worse, I always suspected that Aranax's hate was based more on the fact that Kurgan was a human on the Elven Council than on the facts of the case. Did you not think Kurgan's crimes warranted his banishment? I believe our decision was the correct one. It is just that there is a proper way to conduct oneself, and Aranax was neither unbiased nor objective. I began to have serious misgivings about his membership on the Council after this. The whole Vendigroth situation exploded shortly afterwards, before I could come to a decision about Aranax's role on the Council. How was Kurgan experimenting with his life, victims' life forces? Kurgan was pulling their spirits back from the other side to attempt to communicate with them, experimenting in different ways to perfect his resurrection magic, and worst of all, casting their life force out of the bodies once again. Might I ask you a few more questions? What is it that is troubling your thoughts? Whose tale of woe would you like to have recounted? How about the Bane of Cree? The Bane of Cree. Bringing him to justice was what established my reputation as a warrior, which eventually led to legends surrounding me which I had no control over. The Bane was a nomad warrior who was able to gather together nearly all the ancient nomadic tribes and create a vicious army out of them. I became involved when he slaughtered the army of Kree. What happened then? His legendary courage failed him. When faced with certain defeat, he lost his mind and fled back to Kree. He had his army slaughter every man, woman, and child in his desperation. I do not know what he hoped to accomplish by this. When I caught up with him, I was overcome by a bit of the madman myself. I banished him single-handedly in my fury, which is not an easy thing to do, even then. What is it that is trying? 
Whose tale of woe would you like to have recounted? Uh, Krakatoa? Krakatoa was a conniving coward who found a way to turn himself into a twisted monster, half man and half dragon. In this form, he terrorized cities and villages, killing their inhabitants and burning them to the ground. After a colossal battle and his defeat at the hands of the council, he cried and begged us not to banish him. Pathetic. What is it that is troubling your thoughts? Are you aware of the Panari? I'm well aware of the whole Panari tomfoolery, yes. When I emerged from my regenerative state, I traveled to the mainland. I suppose I thought I could somehow live among the world again. After I spoke with that Mannix fellow, I knew I was deluding myself. Did he tell you how the Panari began? He did not know much. Mostly some fanciful notions mixed with bits and pieces of history. As near as I was able to put together from speaking with him, Kryn Urden, the last surviving member of the Council, started the Panare simply to maintain the wards, to periodically strengthen them, as it were. Did you tell Manax who you were? After I listened to his insane beliefs for what seemed like hours, I hinted that I had actually known Nazruddin. He was already too far gone. He would not have believed any of my protests or denials of my godhood. He most likely would have interpreted the whole thing as some sort of test, I suppose. Are you aware that Khan who uh, murdered Mannix? When Mannix disappeared, I knew that something of that nature must have transpired. You knew nothing about that? I decided it was no longer my place to play a god. Who am I to decide who is right? When I took on that role before... Well, you have already heard what happened then. Alright, we are done talking to him. So let's go back to the boat and then we can sail from there. We can uh, sail to Tarant. All right, so we've actually talked with uh, Nazruddin, and we now know what we need to do now is to go to the Van de Graaff Wastes, and we do have a mark on our map that we can follow. So for now, I'm just going to call this uh, a wrap on this episode, and we will come back in the next episode, and we will continue on with our quests. Uh, we do have to do the Ancient Gods quest, and also in the Van de Graaff Wastes is the, the Mage School for Tulla which will be nice to go to. So these are all things we can do to buff ourselves up before we go to the void. So that'll wrap up this episode. I thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.